in what to me seems like a flashback of the days when you were proclaiming the death of old media. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you are proclaiming uh, the demise of traditional retail and the retail chains. Categories of retail. That's exactly right. Not general purpose retailers, not Walmart, but category specific retailers. Um, uh, specific category specific retailers in areas like books. Yep. Obviously, borders uh, haven't gone under. Uh, video games, uh, consumer electronics, clothes, shoes, and accessories. Um, and the reason is because twofold. Number one, consumers are now used to shopping online. Line. They weren't 10 years ago. Um, they, they are today. And then two is there's this new generation of what we call e-commerce 2.0 companies. Companies like Fab and Zulily and Warby Parker and Bonobos that are much more sophisticated, provide a much more compelling shopping experience, especially for normal consumers. And now that we've, we've become as consumers accustomed to the one-click and you got it. Yeah. It's really all about the experience now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, this is what's happening is you get these areas of shopping like clothing where a lot of people when they shop for clothes, I mean, some people when they shop for clothes, I want to buy you know three pack of tube socks, I'm in and out. They can buy those on Amazon. But for a lot of people, clothes shopping is fun, it's an experience, it's social, it's something they do with their friends. Merchandising matters, creative matters, curation matters. And the best of these new e-commerce startups are very good at that. They're very good at making shopping online just as much fun as shopping in the real world. Um, and consumers are responding. These companies are growing incredibly quickly. So you said these the chains, the, the category-specific retail chains, are much closer to going under than you think. Well, so this is the thing with retail. Retail is inherently highly levered um, because you have this huge fixed cost of the real estate and then all the fixed cost of the inventory, inventory. right? And so it, it, they're like banks. They're, they're, they're levered. And so when you have a relatively small decline in revenue, you can, you can go bankrupt very quickly. You actually have this thing that happens where you can actually be driven into bankruptcy fast because the banks that finance the inventory can pull the credit. And, you know, JCPenney was on the verge of this uh, a little while ago. Sears was on the verge of this a little while ago. You can actually have a run on a retailer. Um, and so we, we think what's going to happen is some of these categories categories is online will take away 10 or 20 percent of revenue, and then all of a sudden the chains will go bankrupt, and then the online companies will be able to take 80 percent of the market. And that's why we're so bullish on these as investments. It seems inevitable that uh, sales tax is coming to an yeah. e-commerce site near you. Will that really have any measurable impact on the business? I'm fairly skeptical in general. I think the convenience is so overwhelmingly positive. Um, the other thing the sales tax thing is doing is it's actually motivating the e-commerce companies like Amazon to actually um, push distribution uh, closer to the customer. If you're going to be charged sales tax everywhere, you might as well push distribution into every state. And it's leading to the arrival of same-day delivery, um, which is going to be a huge shift in e-commerce coming up here, which, again, is going to make e-commerce much more efficient, uh, much more uh, convenient than it even is today. So um, it may so even spur some innovation or accelerate some. I think the retailers who have been lobbying for internet sales tax are probably going to end up regretting it uh, because it is going to ca cause the expectation to be same-day delivery, possibly even same-hour delivery.